Hello and welcome back to Crumpled Underfoot. You are now watching the fourth video from the series Staad Basics. Again, if you missed the earlier part of this series, I put the link of the entire playlist below. They are available and you can check them out anytime. Today we will look back on our model and see the output and post processing. Then I'll show you a quick way on how to work on concrete design using ACI. But before that, let's have a quick recap on the series. The first video was about the startup, some interface, basic model types, and units. So it's just about learning how to start a model in Stad. The second video was the first part of basic modeling, and it was all about geometry, specifications, including support definitions. The third video was a part 2 of basic modeling and it was about assigning properties, loads, combinations, and other commands. We also made use of UBC97 for static earthquake analysis. So our main objective for this video is for you to be familiar with the output of STAT and be able to navigate your way around its post-processing feature. As a side objective, you should also be able to make use of concrete design function at the end of this video. So here's our model. After you run the analysis, the output icon should be available for clicking and you'll see it pop out in red. Or alternatively, you can quickly access the output in post processing from this window and don't worry, you won't get lost because this window always pops out each time you run the analysis. And you have options here whether to go to post-processing or to view the output file or whether to go back to modeling. Now here's the output viewer. You can find Stad's directory of messages on the left side of the panel. This is where you can easily click to take you directly to the section within the main output. And this viewer has five basic sections. The first one is the information about the input. Notice they are written in pure text. And also, this is how they are written in the editor. Next thing is the warning, if you have any. In this case, I have a warning here, but I think it's just about the pattern of one-way loading and I will just leave it at that. Stad simply wants me to break that down into smaller portions of one-way load. So just never mind for now. And the next is error. Again, if there are any errors, you'll see them here and once you click through the error or error messages, you would be easily taken to that line where the error is found. And next is results, but that is if you specified perform analysis command. Otherwise, this won't show up. Now remember, I included statics check, and thus I have here the applied load and reaction. Also, for the UBC cases, we can see here the total seismic weights, and of course, the design base shear. Also, other relevant factors such as these. And for the last section, you can find design output. But for this case, we haven't specified any design commands, so it's not yet displayed in here. But later on, we would come back to view the output and results after we use the design commands. But for now, that's all for the output window. So let's go to post-processing. When you start in post-processing, you are normally greeted by this window, Results Setup. What you can do here is to filter the results. And you have two criteria basically, by load case or by range. I will just choose load case number one, that is the AQX. In this way, I would have to view the other load cases later on instead of putting them all together at once. 
you would realize that it's a lot harder to read results when you get more crowded with too much information. And for the range, I'll just pick all by default. Now we are at the post-processing workspace. The tabs on the left side of the model window allows you to choose among the entities to get the results from. They also change according to what you have in the model. For this example, I have the node and beam tabs. If you have plates or shell elements, you should also be able to see them here. While the animation and reports tabs are there by default, so you cannot do anything about it. The sub tabs here contain results relevant to stat entities. For example, from the node tab, you can see displacement and reactions. For beam, you can see forces, stresses, and graphs. While all the values or numbers are displayed here at the right side of the model window. Anytime within the model window, you can switch the displacement, forces, and stress diagrams on or off using these icons here above. You just choose among them. You can also change these diagrams depending on the selected load case or combination through this drop-down list. In case that you want to display some values within the diagrams, you can click on the results command that is found within the menu bar. Then select view value. There you can find options on what to display. So you notice I just played around for quite a bit for you to see the different functions. And in the case of reactions, these annotated values may be moved using the select text cursor. And finally, to display a more detailed result, you may simply double click on specific member element you wish to check. So that's the basics on how you work on the output and post processing. We now proceed to concrete design module of STAAD and to do that we have to go back to modeling. From here, we can either click directly on the design tab that is found at the left side of the model window or select commands from the menu bar, then click design. Make sure you select concrete. The first thing to do here is to set the design code to ACI using this drop down list here. Once you are able to do that, you can proceed to define applicable parameters such as concrete and rebar strength, clear cover, reinforcement sizes, etc. So what I just did was, I defined the concrete and rebar strength together with the track level. Note that the track level controls the level of information presented in the design output. We'll see this later once we get back to the output viewer. Then after you set the design parameters, you can assign them to members which they are applicable. You can do this in the same way you assign properties and loads from the earlier videos.
Next is, you need to define design commands. This will tell Staad how exactly you want to design your members. Your beams should be, of course, designed as beams, that is, flexure and shear, and your columns as columns, both for axial loads and flexure, including shear, of course. After I defined the design commands, I also had them assigned to respective members. Again, design beam for beam members and design column for column members. So from here, we can run the analysis so that we can view and then check the results. But before I end, I'll just walk you through very quickly on the design output. By the end of the video, you may be able to do this by yourself. If not, that's perfectly fine because you can watch this as many times as you want until you get comfortable to work on your own. So stick around because I plan to put out another video for this series and that would be about still design using AISC. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned. See you around and thanks for watching.